Seeker policy is front and centre of the political debate at the moment. The opposition has announced a military-led solution to the issue. Let's bring in our Big Guns of Politics, Treasurer Chris Bowen and Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey. Gents, good morning to you both. Joe, uh, your plan has drawn some criticism from legal and military experts. Um, what, what do you say of this? Say about this? Well, there's always going to be predictable criticism, but the fact is the military have been used by the government in new, on numerous occasions, uh, in cyclones, uh, in the Northern Territory Indigenous intervention, and on this occasion we're saying uh, this is part of the solution, but we're going to bring all the agencies of government together, headed up by a general, and make sure that the boats are actually stopped. Three more came in two hours last night, so clearly the PNG solution is not a solution at all. Mm. Um, Chris, um, former PM Malcolm Fraser, he, he wants a major processing centre in Indonesia with UNHCR backing. Do you reckon that would cut, cut the flow of asylum seekers? We can certainly take more from Indonesia directly, and that's been done, but that is, that, to suggest that's some sort of answer in itself is really not right. Uh, I think what we're seeing is both parties uh, addressing this issue in different ways, us saying we want to see people who come by boat not resettled in Australia, not ever, processed in Papua New Guinea and staying there. It's a tough message, but it's an important one. But what we saw yesterday from the opposition was just another three-word slogan and a PowerPoint presentation uh, to try and cover up a policy which just isn't going to work. Hey, you know, all the experts say it's not safe to turn boats around. Uh, Indonesia said they won't take them. Papua New Guinea will take people. We're dealing with a country that's working with us. The opposition said yes to the country that says no and no to the country that says yes. It just doesn't make sense. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Just you, guys, make sense. You, you guys have had five policies in six years, uh, please, we've had a 4,000 word policy out there for a You've long a period of time. Slogan, Joe, and yesterday and, we had another one because, because you're just desperate and shrill because we've got a policy which will work. Well, it's not. Three boats came in two hours last night. There's 300 places, births on Manus Island. 860 people have come since you said everyone's going to go to Manus Island, which has only 300 beds. So please, don't try and con the Australian people. The no. fact is, it was Labor that opened the door of the boats. They can't shut the door. And look, it, the most humanitarian thing, the one thing we agree on now, that you and I agree on now, is the most humanitarian thing you can do is try to stop the boats. Absolutely. That's the most we important. We agree on that. But, but that is a change but from it, yeah, Labor. It takes more than that a three-word slogan well, to it, do so, Well, Joe. it is a change okay. from Labor. But this difference in beds on Manus how, how many people can Manus Island take? Oh, well, at the moment, it's got a reasonably moderate capacity, but the minister, yeah, no, it's more than that, Joe. But the minister has said that we're going to put more there. Now, we've never said that this is going to work overnight. We were very clear. We said this is going to take a while to work. You've got to get the message through. People have already paid mm. their money. That's why we're doing ads. People criticise us for the ads. You've got to get the message through. How many people, people smugglers with... will lie? How many people, people smugglers smug... spin, and we've got to be out there counteracting it. And that's what that's what we're doing. And it does take a while. There's no silver bullets here. But our policy, some people, many people, criticise it for being too tough but it's the right policy to actually deal with this. Don't we have to go back to Indonesia here, though, and, and stop this problem, meet it halfway? I mean, is But we do. I mean, the Prime Minister's been working closely with SBY mm -hmm. on this, but t these are people coming through Indonesia. They're not Indonesians. It's, you can't just say Indonesia should fix it. You've got to work with them, and you can't just say, oh, we'll turn the boats around and make it all Indonesia's yeah. problem. You've got to work with people. Like we're working with Papua New Guinea, and I think what we're seeing is the opposition, and really what the opposition is doing is quite disgraceful, with all due respect to Joe. Out there messaging some saying, oh, this will never work, people will still come to Australia. They're feeding into the people smugglers' hands because okay. the opposition really doesn't want right. this to work, and it's what? highly irresponsible. You don't want PNG to work. It's highly irresponsible, Joe. What Tony Mate. Abbott has said, Tony Abbott saying, oh, don't, what, don't worry, don't okay, listen, okay, you'll okay. still end up in okay. Australia. It's okay. highly right. irresponsible. OK. Uh, asylum seekers is one big issue for the election coming up. The other one is the economy. The Financial Review is reporting the government's facing a $20 billion revenue shortfall over the next four years. Chris, is that right? Are they the predictions you're getting and are you really going to have to play tough on the raise again? Now, what I've said, uh, Koshi, is that the budget uh, is there. We update the budget. I've said we'll put out an economic statement 
uh, before the election. That's what normally happens in, in elections these days. You'd expect Penny Wong and I to do that. I've said the terms of trade, what the world's prepared to pay us for our goods, is falling. That has an impact. We will account for all our spending. We'll account for that in the economic statement in an open and transparent way. I read today in the same article, Joe, saying that they're not going to put their costings well, out on, before on, the election. Just, so just, you can clear that no, up, no, Joe. No, no, clear no, 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 no. Clear it up. Do you stand by the commitment to a surplus in 2015? That's the plan. No, 2016, 17, Joe. Two, right. No, 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 no. Kevin Rudd said we'll get to surplus in 2015 when he debated himself at the press club because, a week ago. Do you but, stand by that? Because Tony Abbott didn't turn do up. You, do you stand by that? We, we've been very clear and consistent balance and then surplus according to our strategy, yes. Right, now, okay, what's that's a change already, no, number one. Change, Joe, but and what's concerning two. is that you've said you won't put your costings out Wait, this morning get, in the field. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, number two, there are reports in numerous papers today that the government is divided about whether to remain committed to a surplus. Number three, every number the Labor Party has put out over the last six years has been dead wrong, dead wrong. Now is, it's coming to crunch time and the numbers have to tell the truth. They have never told the truth about the set of the numbers. This is what is going to define the election and beyond. And Australians need to know there is some certainty. So if you're saying that you're absolutely committed to this budget surplus, as Kevin Rudd said, for 2015, we'll wait and see how it pans out over the next few days. But what I do know is they're not going to call an election this Sunday because they have a budget crisis now. They briefed they were going to have a major economic statement today. They can't make the numbers Just add right, up. Joe. Just well, not you right. did, mate. And we you, know that. No, well, you don't know You that can't make the numbers true, add up. Joe. That's the problem. That. Right. OK. Joe, uh, you can give a commitment to put your costings out before will, the election. Absolutely. And no absolutely. secret commission of audit absolutely. to hide the costs and savings to try numbers are OK. Gents. Thank you, Koshi. Um, I just want to lighten the mood a little bit. I want to show you this and get, get uh, an idea of what you think. Bob Catter has asked his supporters to come up with an election ad. This is the winning entry. Take a look. Bob Catter, that you wear a big hat In a land so full of sunshine There's nothing wrong with that It doesn't matter, Bob Catter That you're not posh nor IT What matters, Bob Catter? Is your Australia party? No, I think, could, I think you could do a big hat. Oh, what do you reckon? Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. <laughs> but it's quite catchy, don't you think? I mean, you know what they say about big hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob's got the biggest crisp. What do you reckon? That's right. That's right. It's a winner. You it's said a winner. Like we can order that. It's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a two don't you, Joe? You've got yeah, all, make yeah, it all do that. We had to do right. two serious a topics hat. and yeah. something a bit more. Well, look, this is, this is Bob Catter <laughs> <laughs> in all his glory. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, thank you. See you next week. Thanks,